Hello and thanks for joining us. In this show, we take a deeper dive into teams around the NFL. We look at the Bills win over the Broncos and the Pats win over the Texans. We also will dissect the climate of politics and sports and our thoughts on many NFL players' national anthem protests. That and much more coming up next on T360. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Cordell Cummings. I'm Nick Coble. Well, Nick, let's get right into it. The Patriots barely picked up the win on Sunday versus the Houston Texans. What is your impressions on the Patriots and have they been underwhelming? Well, it's hard to call the Patriots underwhelming when they're two and one so far in the season. It was kind of upsetting to see them lose to the Chiefs week one, but the Patriots are really a tale of offense against defense. Their defense is last in the league in yards, letting up 461 yards a game and uh, they're last in the league in points per game, letting up 31.7 per game. But with their offense, they're first in the league in those departments as well, mm -hmm. with 440.7 yards per game and 33 points per game. So it's, it's kind of tough to call on them right now. Yeah, I think they have become, if it's college, like a Big 12 team, mm -hmm. a team that is great on offense, but their defense is, is horrible. And it's pretty much like the team they played a couple weeks ago in the Saints. You mm -hmm. know, definitely. The Saints have been like that for years. But what the Patriots need to do, in my opinion, they definitely need to go out and try to trade for a pass rusher because their pass rush, they have no pass rush production and their linebackers. And, w and a team that was supposed to have a really good secondary has just been picked apart. You know, you have a rookie in Deshaun Watson. Just he put up 30 points on you. You can't have that, especially from a Bill Belichick coach team. Definitely. Um, now, with the Patriots, if you're going to beat the Patriots, it's definitely by outscoring them. But, I mean, good luck with that because it's Tom Brady and the Patriots. Like, it's really hard to outscore the Patriots. And it sort of reminded me of the 2013 NFL season for the Patriots where their offense was remarkable. But their defense just couldn't come up short. So the best you can hope for is have Tom Brady with the ball in the last two minutes or else you're going to lose. And yeah, it's a shame. That was a big thing against Houston. They, uh, they had the ball on the Patriots' 18-yard line with fourth and inches, and they decided to kick the field goal. It, against Tom Brady, you can't give him that much time to come back because he will come back and he will score on you. Yeah. So the best move there probably would have been to go for the first down, even if I give him the ball on the 18-yard line. And you can, all the Patriots can do is just hope that the Julian, Julian Edelman injury doesn't catch up and against teams with good defenses, how much can they slow them down, which a team with good defense is the Buffalo Bills. As we transition to them, they had a big win over the Denver Broncos on Sunday. And uh, what's your impressions of the Bills and what does this win mean for them on the rest of the season? Well, the Bills are really confusing because it, during the preseason, they traded away their star wide receiver in Sammy Watkins. They traded away their number one corner in Ronald Darby and they got a bunch of draft picks. So it's really interesting when you think that they're looking towards the future. But to start the season, they're two and one. I mean, they lost a really close game to the Carolina Panthers. Their defense is looking way better than everybody thought they were going to look. It's, it's hard to tell. It's, it's really exciting to look forward to the game against Atlanta because that's a real opponent that they're going to have to prove themselves with. Yeah, I think bringing in a new coach definitely was a, a culture change for them, a culture change that they really needed. I think their offense is still piecing it together with Tyrod Taylor. He's not the greatest quarterback in the war world, but when you needed him in this last game against the Broncos, he was able, able to avoid pressure and get a key first down, which was very important in that game. And I think what they have to do is just stick to their script. You're not going to out outplay every team you go against. And the Broncos, I don't know if it was a letdown game or if the, the Buffalo Bills were just better. But many games you have to scheme around for, Ty, Ty, for Tyrod Taylor. And uh, I think that's what they have to do for the rest of the season if they want to keep winning. With Tyrod Taylor, he is really impressive in situations where he can roll out of the pocket mm -hmm. and see the whole field. But lately, especially in the game against Carolina, he's been lining up under center, trying to take a normal three-step or a, a three drop back and with him, he's just too short to see over the offensive right. line. When the offense really gets moving, you'll see him in the shotgun with the line loaded so that he can have as much time in the pocket as possible so he can move around and see down the open field. And put him in space. Yeah, Give exactly. Sean McCoy the ball in space. Just get athletes the ball in space. That's all you can really ask for. The two tools on that offense are definitely Tyrod Taylor and LaShawn McCoy. Maybe they could be using a little bit more read option as well. Yeah, so we move on to a more serious topic in the Buffalo Bills game and around the league where the national anthem protests are running rampant. You know, um, President Donald Trump has said multiple things about the players who have knelt or demonstrated um, their frustration with his statements and just what they decided to protest. So what is your thoughts 
on where the NFL goes from here and what do you think about the national anthem protests in general? It's going to be interesting to see how these teams react to it this week um, where the news isn't so fresh. Um, we saw a lot of teams stand up for what they believe in after the presidents called them SOBs. Um, but we had statements from team owners, including the Lions, the Saints, the Falcons, the Ravens, the Seahawks, the Dolphins, the Bills, Rams, Texans, Eagles, Colts, Browns, Patriots. <laughs> All of those owners went publicly and announced that they support their players in their protest and they want to make sure that their players have a voice and they want to build that team atmosphere. Um, a little bit of hypocrisy though, where you have owners like Robert Kraft, who donated a mm -hmm. million dollars to the president's campaign. You have owners like um, Stan Kroenke, who's mm -hmm. the owners of the Rams, he donated a million dollars. Uh, the owners of the Browns, they donated $400,000. Yeah, owners. And I don't know if they're starting to feel a little bit of regret <laughs> in that decision, <laughs> or if uh, they just want to stay with their players, even though they still support the president. And I think the protest has gotten from, you know, when Cap Colin Kaepernick started it, about he gave specific reasons whether people want to recognize what he stated or not. He's not. He wasn't perfect in demonstrating everything he wanted to uh, bring about or kneel for. He wasn't perfect, you know. Um, he definitely made some mistakes with his socks he wore and some other things. But I think the main point nowadays is, has the protest been diluted? Now it's become every player is kneeling, and you have to ask yourself if are they kneeling to support and to support the cause Colin Kaepernick is doing, or are they just doing it to dilute the message? And is the owners part of that? I wouldn't want to call it propaganda, but are they part of the, the product you're well, seeing? I mean, you got such a huge platform that these players are dealing with. And it's, I mean, it, this is kind of a debate where you're either on one side or the other. Yeah. And we don't have a Which lot a of shame. middle ground. Shame. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's, like I said, it's going to be really interesting to see how many teams keep this up after it's not so fresh. Yeah. But uh, what a lot of people need to realize is this protest is not about the flag. It's never been about the national anthem. They're just trying to use their platform to speak out as well as they can about the injustices in America yeah. when it comes to racial profiling, police brutality, mm -hmm. and all, all, I mean, if all that things that uh, Kaepernick really speaked about is the actual message that they're trying to yeah. portray. And obviously that gets diluted and de depending on the media out there, whatever you may say, but I believe what will happen from now on is you'll have a, li a lot of players, because the last week you had it all about unity. And that's a great thing, but these protests started because it was talking about the things you just mentioned. So are we going to the point where we're unity everything, which is definitely something that should be pushed. But the purpose of the protest was to bring light to the injustices. Do you think that has happened so far? No, I don't think so. To be honest, I, it really seems like it's kind of been a misfire. I agree with the message, I really do. But I feel like everybody's getting distracted with things that don't matter. And kind of the hypocrisy of the NFL in its own sense is like they're making money off this too. Like you, every platform is talking about this. ESPN, local news, everybody's talking about it. And I mean, while some fans are renouncing their teams because <laughs> of their stance, they really, it's, it's kind of crazy to assume that they're not making a little bit of a profit off yeah, this. Yeah, and the last thing I want to say about that, you know, uh, the Steelers and the Titans in their game, they decided just not to sh um, come out for the national anthem, which used to happen. Mm -hmm. Most teams would stay in the locker room and not be required to go out to the, uh, for, the, for the playing of the national anthem, which actually, which actually tells you something about what the NFL was trying to do. Um, but uh, Andre Villanueva, the left tackle for the Steelers, he actually, who is a former Army Ranger, he decided to actually come out and, um, you know, stand for the national anthem, which, in my opinion, um, is, is completely right. Um, you know, he comes from a totally different perspective from players. And I think it's possible to live in a place where you can respect the rights of people who decide to kneel for an anthem, which isn't a, a human being. That's, it is a symbol, and symbols have different meanings for everyone whether people like it or not in this country. But for Andre Villanueva, he comes from a totally different place, and I think we can respect both people. And, and I think we have to respect both people. And there, there shouldn't be a left and right or right and wrong. I can re sit here and respect him for his sacrifices and him wanting to come up with a national anthem, as well as the players who decided to nail. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the big issue here is like, 
with football, there's so much diversity in the teams that you really, like, you're going to have every opinion on every, like, such a broad spectrum. Like, you'll have inner city kids who literally come from nothing and become millionaires in a day. You have people who served in the military that fought for their right to, to for their First Amendment rights to protest. Um, and honestly, like, it's kind of like the beauty in a disaster yeah. where a team can get together and really, like you said, find unity. And like a, with a team, it's really important to have that team aspect. Like you want to be a family with your team so that you'll go out there and play as hard as you can every single play for that person next to you. Yeah. So I just hope that this actually serves a purpose and many of the players actually go into their communities and give back or do donate their time because sometimes that's more important. Um, so with that, we want to thank you for joining us. We encourage you to follow us on social media to keep up with all the latest in sports, news, and entertainment. Again, I'm Cordell Cummings. I'm Nick Coble. Thanks for watching T360.